What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today we're going over the BIOS on the ASRock Z790 Live Mixer motherboard. Now, while this BIOS may look different than other ASRock's BIOSes, it's going to be pretty much the same on the Intel side. So of course, this is an Intel motherboard. So every ASRock Z790 motherboard BIOS should be pretty much the same as this when it comes to settings. This one's just gonna look a little bit different because of course it is the live mixer and it has that cool graffiti look to it. But we do have an easy mode. So when you drop into the BIOS, you'll be dropped into easy mode more than likely. If you're wondering like, how do I get into the screen? How do I get into the BIOS? When you boot up your computer, you just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard, not the backspace. Just keep on hitting delete and you'll be dropped into this screen right here. And again, this is easy mode. So at the top here, we can see uh, the motherboard that we're running, which of course is the Z790 Live Mixer. We can see the version of the BIOS as well. So 9.03. It would have been nice to see the dates of this BIOS as well. So, you know, we can see, oh, I haven't upgraded or I haven't updated in a while. It would been nice to have that there. But we can see the processor that we're running, processor speed and our memory. Over here, we have a graph of our CPU temperature in real time motherboard temperature and cpu voltage we have our time right here and the date at the top we can go into advanced mode we can change our language and you can turn the rgb lighting on the board completely on or off just by clicking here and then we have discard changes save and exit load default or information and again if you bring up help it just brings up sort of like a shortcut screen really over here we have our DRAM information so we can see the memory that we do have installed. In order to enable an XMP profile, you just click on XMP profile. Um, I already had it enabled, but again, just hit XMP and it's going to enable that profile. Super simple and easy to do. Storage configuration, you can see that we only have one M.2 drive in here, but if you have other drives, they would all show up here. This is really good just to show you that your drives are being detected by the motherboard. Power setting, you have the ability to load the Intel base power limit. It's disabled by default, but you can turn that on. Fan status will show you the fans that you have connected to the motherboard and their fan speed in real time. Um, and again, you can easily go in and you know click on the CPU cooler type and you can change to air cooling 240 to 140, 240 to 280, and 360 to 420. Um, so you can change the CPU cooler type. So I'm running the 360. So of course I changed it to 360 to 420. Um, and you can go ahead and do that here. Boot priority. We only have one drive here showing up, but if we had multiple drives or a USB flash drive or something like that, you can drag and drop these extremely easily to set up your boot priority. You have instant flash that allows you to easily flash your BIOS. And then you have fantastic tuning, which will go ahead and tune all the fans that you have connected to the motherboard if you wanted to do that before you installed Windows. Now that is it for easy mode. And I think it gives you everything that you need. You have your XMP profile, you have your boot priority, and you can change the fans around and turn off RGB. And I think that's really all you need for the easy mode. Now going into advanced mode, you can click here or just hit, hit uh, F6 on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll hit F6. And here you're brought to the main screen. So again, this is going to show you all of your information and you know what you're running and everything like that. And then we have a My Favorites. Now I haven't added anything to the My Favorites, but you can add any setting in the advanced mode to your My Favorites. Maybe it's something that you're changing all the time. You can make it easier to find by putting it in your My Favorites. Now OC Tweaker, this is where you're going to do all of your system tuning and everything like that. So here we have all of our targets at the top. So that's going to show us all the targets that we have for things that we're changing. And as you change settings, your targets at the top will change to let you know like, okay, if I change this, this is what my overclock is going to be. This is what my CPU frequency is going to be and all of that stuff. V core compensation, you can set it to auto or you can change it. Um, this is sort of like your load line calibration here. Again, CPU cooler type. Again, you know, we set it to our 360 to 420, but you can set it there. Base frequency boost, you can set it to auto, um, or you can select all of these different wattages if you wanted to. If you're not doing anything, again, just leave everything on auto. 
I really like it that we have these like little folders here for each specific thing. So CPU, DRAM, voltage, and fiber. Go into CPU. Again, we can go into turbo ratio information. And again, you can see all of your P cores and your E cores and what their limits are. CPU configuration. Again, you can set your P core ratio to auto or you can do it all cores. So if you want all cores running at the same per core or specific per core, you can set those things very, very easily. Um, you can set your BCLK. Again, all this is set to auto. And if you're not gonna be doing any overclocking, just leave it on auto. That's all you're gonna have to do. Um, you can turn Intel, Intel Speed Step, Intel, Intel Turbo Boost, Speed Shift. Everything is pretty much enabled by default for the CPU to run how it's supposed to run. You don't, again, have to change anything. Um, again, your long duration power limits and your short duration power limits. These are things that you're going to want to change if you are doing any overclocking. But again, this is all of your CPU settings. So you can easily change things if you wanted to, which again, again, if you, if you are doing overclocking, you know, your performance cores, you would set this to either you want an all core overclock or you want a per core overclock again. You can set that and then the specific per core as well you know you can set that uh as well but if you're not doing anything just leave everything on auto go back here you can hit this uh, little arrow or just hit escape and that brings you back dram configuration again we can see our memory information all of our timings and everything like that um you know on the board or what you have installed uh you can see your xmp profile already um, but then again, you can select your SMP, your XMP profile here very easily. You can go ahead and do that. Um, and then you have just your different settings for your memory and then all of your timings, your primary timings, secondary timings. If you wanted to loosen or tighten your timings, you can do it all right in here, which is really easy to do again, more and more timings as we go down here. And again, just, yeah, all, all timings here and then some advanced settings. ASRock timing optimization, things like that, um, that you can go ahead and set there. Voltage configuration. So if you're wondering like where, why wasn't the voltages stuff in the CPU settings, or the DRAM settings, it's all right in here. So again, you can set your voltages, you can set your load line calibrations, you can do all this stuff. And again, every setting is gonna have a description of what it is too. So if you're wondering like, what does load line calibration mean? How high is level four? how high are your levels? It's all right over here, which is really nice to see. But again, you have all of your voltages in here, your PMIC settings, um, all that stuff for voltage is all right here. So everything to do with voltage is right here. And again, I really like these folders because it separates everything. And then your fiber configuration, again, you can set all of that stuff up right in here. Very easy to do. In advanced is where you're going to find everything else that's going to be on the board, whether it's information or settings. So CPU configuration, again, you can see your P core information. You can see your E core information. You can turn hyper threading on and off. You can activate certain P cores or certain E cores. If you wanted to your halt statuses, thermal throttling, all that kind of stuff you can set up right there under chipset. This is going to have like your primary graphics adapter, whether it's going to be auto or if you wanted to use the built-in on your CPU, you can set all that stuff up, your link speeds, everything like that is going to be set up, your audio, you can enable or disable the LAN on here, you can do all of that right on here. RGB LED, again, this will turn all the LEDs or RGB LEDs on the board on or off. So you can set that, um, you know, you can change all that stuff very easily in here as well storage configuration this is everything of course to do with storage so again you can enable or disable your sata controllers you can set your modes you can um, see all of your drives and then if you do have a drive installed you can click into it and just get the information on the drive that you do have installed which is nice nvme configuration again we have one drive here we can see it it's a lexar drive it's one terabyte and it you know we can see everything so you have that there thunderbolt we don't have a thunderbolt adapter on here but if we did have one connected to the header we would have that information a super io configuration nothing in there acpi configuration you can see all of that stuff usb configuration um you can see your usb controllers how many usb devices that you have connected and then trusted computing 
There we go. Trusted computing. If for some reason, there it goes. It wasn't letting me click it. I'm gonna try it again. There we go. Um, security device supports, all of that kind of stuff. Um, by default, the you know uh, TPM and PTT are enabled on here, so you don't have to do that. This is a newer motherboard. So you won't have to do that if you are installing Windows 11. It's all set up by default, so you don't have to change any of that there. And then you can set up your UEFI setup style. Again, this is when you drop into the BIOS. So if you always wanted to go into advanced mode, you can change it, but here it's set to easy mode. Um, and then your active page on entry as well. So if you just wanted to jump into advanced mode and like be an OC tweaker, you can go ahead and do that. Um, which is nice as well. And then you can select if you want the full HD UEFI. It's always set to auto by default. Under tools, we do have some tools. So you can set up the the uh, polychrome RGB for the whole board if you really wanted to. Um, you can go ahead and do that. You can actually email tech service if you're having an issue. You can do it right from the BIOS. Um, the SSD secure erase tool, NVMe sanitation tool. So the difference obviously is the SSD secure erase is going to be for SATA based SSDs and the NVMe sanitation tool is going to be for NVMe SSDs. Auto driver installer. So when you go ahead and install Windows for the first time, auto driver installer will be enabled by default. This means that when you load up Windows for that first time, you're going to get a prompt that says download and install the auto driver installer, which I would suggest because it just makes it easier to get all the drivers for the motherboard at once. Um, but you can enable or disable that. Some people find it kind of weird that it does that. So, um, but after you do it the first time, it sets it to disabled, uh, which is nice. So it doesn't pop up every time. Um, and then you have instant flash and then the Intel uh, MEI flash, you have that right there. Hardware monitor is gonna give you all of your temperatures, fan speeds, voltages in real time. So you have that. And then you can go through your tuning for your fans all right in here as well. So you have fan tuning and fantastic tuning, all which can be done right here in the BIOS. Um, you can do it in their software as well. Security, uh, again, you can set up a supervisor password, a user password, secure boots. Um, this is where you, you would enable uh, Intel PTT or Platform Trust Technology. Like I said, it is enabled by default, so you don't have to change that uh, when you are first installing Windows 11. And then boots, we can set our boot option priorities, fast boots, all boot settings are right in here. And then under exit, you know, we have save changes, load uh, defaults, things like that. And then we do have boot override. And as I always say, it's great to see that because again, when you're first installing Windows, you, you're probably doing it from a flash drive and you have boot override to boot from that flash drive first. And then when it does the restart, you don't have to worry about pulling that drive out. It just, again, goes through the normal boot priority. So you have all of that right here. This BIOS is really easy to find everything. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, you know, again, I really like how they have all the folders here for the, you know, the OC tweaker menu and you have all of your targets here. And then if going into easy mode, you have everything that, you know, you would need. You're not gonna have to change all that much. XMP profile, um, setting your boot priority, maybe changing your fan or your CPU cooler type. And that is about it. So if you have any questions about this motherboard and its BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.